Hello everybody! And is everybody well on this beautiful spring day? Oh, I am so delighted to hear that. And me, you ask? Oh yes, I am doing absolutely wonderful. In fact, today is a beautiful day to go flying. And why? Because the weather is just right. So, where are we off to? Well, good question. Let me tell you. Solakbury, are you there, Solakbury? You wrote me, if you remember, and you said you love my videos. Thank you so very much. Do appreciate that. And then you said, how about you try a flight from Edinburgh, which is EGPH, to Oslo, E-G-N-M, which is the Gerdemann Airport there. And you said, it has a wonderful approach into Norway. Yes, it does. And you say, I use the Aerosoft scenery for Gerdemann Airport, which is brilliant if you have it. Well, as it so happens, I do have that. So that's what we'll do. We'll do Edinburgh to Oslo. Edinburgh EGPH airport scenery is made by Gary at UK2000. And Oslo Gerdemann, which is ENGM airport scenery, is made by Aerosoft. Beautifully detailed. We'll be following and I checked it out, there is a flight. It's Norwegian Air Shuttle, and it's flight 1641. If you want to look that up, just look up DY1641, and that will bring up the history of the flights. Now, this morning, there was a flight between those two points. So I'm going to try to replicate that as best I can. From what I could see, it departed from somewhere around about Stand 6 at Edinburgh, and it docked at Stand 43 in Oslo. I don't know whether we'll get the same one, which uh, whether we'll come in on a different runway, but that's what we'll look for. So... If you're ready, Sol, are you ready? Then let's go into pre-flight and check out the weather, make ourselves a flight plan, and then build all the scenery, okay? See you in pre-flight. Well, here we are in Flight Aware. Up here, you can see we're looking at Norwegian Air Shuttle Flight 1641. There's the designators over here. This one arrived 20 minutes ago. It took off from Edinburgh and landed at Oslo, and it landed 10 minutes early. It also left 8 minutes early. Well, we'll be just as good, I'm sure. <laughs> Now, looking at the flight, there's some interesting things that we need to look at here if we're going to follow this. There are basically two departures from Edinburgh. One is to the north, which is this route, and another one is to the south, which goes down here and then goes across, adds about 100 nautical miles to it, but that's sometimes the route that is taken. And over here, if you see this, there's a root point here, and then it goes up here, swings down, and then goes into land at that point. What was the cruise altitude? 
They flew at 39,000 feet. Well, we'll put that in and see whether we can do the same thing, shall we? Taxi time was 10 minutes, departing at Edinburgh, and 4 minutes arriving at Gerdemann Airport in Oslo. Looking at Windy. Here's the wind. It's a good stiff wind at the minute, blowing from 100 degrees south, that's southeast. And it's coming in fairly stiff. It's varying, however, from 080 to 140. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. There's some clouds at 2400 feet. Temperature is a brisk 8 degrees. Q&H 1032, but VFR. Now, looking at the runways, the likelihood is it will probably be this one, 06 departure. I don't know if that will hold, but that's what the other one did earlier this morning. We may get the same one. So that would be the 06. It'll be a crosswind takeoff. And if that's the case, it will be interesting. Here we are at Gardamon Airport and the wind is variable at two knots. In other words, fairly calm. Visibility okay. VFR, of course. Temperature 6 degrees, Q&H 1044. Some pretty high pressure over this area. Looking at the runways, well, we already talked about whether it would be 19 right or 19 left coming in here, but we'll be either on this side or that side. All right, let's go into Sim Brief. We are, of course, Ryanair and we are Flight 186. We are departing from EGPH. And we're going to go to ENGM. And we've been given an alternate. This is uh, an airport not too far from Oslo. So if we had to go uh, pear shaped, then that's where we would go to. Our airframe is this one. I've already built this one. There's the registration information, cruise flow file six. Schedule flight time, one hour 55. It's showing a 06 departure and a 19er right uh, arrival. I'm going to put in here the flight level of 390 and we'll accept that one. We are full. And of course, we're full because we are offering free champagne and caviar. <laughs> now, this is the route that they've given us down here, but we're going to make a couple of changes. As you can see, the route distance on this is 737 nautical miles. But this one is 635 nautical miles. If I go back to this, let me show you what it does. See this? It goes, this is the southern route, and it actually adds 100 nautical miles onto the route. But if we change it to this one, then the route becomes the northern route. And then here's where we have the choices. Now, it's got us coming in on this particular waypoint. Let's see what it's... It's got it coming up at the RIPAM, 4M. If we change that, we need to change that to... Now, that is when we look at that that is closer to the route that the 
previous flight took this morning. So that's what I'm going to put in. So there it is. It's the Greasy 4D departure and the Adopt 3 mic arrival. And the total distance is 607 nautical miles, which saves us 130 or 40 nautical miles in distance. Makes a lot of difference, I think. All right, let's go up then and save this flight. And then we'll generate the flight plan. Well, there's our routing at the top. 390 is our altitude. And there is the routing. It's come all the way through. We look like it's got a good flight plan there. And in here, we are Ryanair 186. This is how to read the flight altitude is right there. And then this is the flight route itself. ENTO is just to the south of Oslo and that's our alternate if things go pear-shaped. We need to know cost index 6. We need to know the average wind speed for the FMC. This is the block fuel that we're going to need to have on board for the trip. A lot less than had we gone the other route that Simbrief put up. Reserves are right here. And right here, that's the trip and taxi. No tankering recommended. Right here is the route ID and I'll put this in the description box below the video so you can follow this. Provided, of course, that we don't have any changes. Here's our descent information. We're going to need to know this information for flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet. And there's the wind direction and speed for 15,000 feet. And there's the wind speed and direction at 10,000 feet. Now, coming all the way down, we'll look at the weather. <clears throat> Well, there's absolutely clear weather. I've looked at th all three plates. There are no weather fronts anywhere in between. It looks like this is going to be a perfect day, as I said, for flying. And looking at now our flight altitude, there we are, flight level 390. Here you can see we have a little bit of a tailwind over here, just a little bit here. Then at this point, we still have a little extra tailwind, swing around, and then we come in to land here. And the star that we looked at, that will take us into either one nine right or one nine left. And here's the vertical profile, departure from Edinburgh here, straight up over to the top of Klein, we have a little bit of uh, time at the top before the top of descent and then arrival at Gerdemont Airport. This wavy dotted line, this is the tropopause. And since we're going to be above that, then the chances are this will be a smooth flight at that altitude. So therefore, all of those posh champagne glasses will not risk getting cracked or broken. How about that? Okay, let's go into Navigraph Charts. Here we are, Navigraph Charts. Click Flights. Click New Flights from Simbrief. And there's the one that we can bring in. Click on the Origin. We'll need to pin the airport down here. We'll need to pin the stands and the coordinates. We'll be using the 
the Greece for Delta departure. I'll pin that and we'll look at that. So there's the departure plate taking off from six, swinging around and then going up on that, that route. All right, going over to our destination. I'll open the charts list for Oslo. We'll need the airport parking stands and pin those down at the bottom. We'll need the uh, Doppy 3 Mike arrival. I'll pin that. And this is the arrival plate right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a doppy. So I'll go Zoll and put in a doppy. A D O P I. And now that brings that in straight up here from Zoll to a doppy, joins it up with the route to bring it around. It's interesting that they have this little zigzag here. It may well have been that the previous flight this morning simply had a kind air traffic controller that said, just go from a doppy straight up to here and swing around in. Very often, those are the things that happen. So we'll bring in two plates since we're not sure if we're going to be coming in on runway 19 left. I'll put 19 left in there and I'll also put category 3 19 right at the bottom. If it's 19 right, you can see that it comes down to Bavad and then we'll come out here and then straight down onto the runway if that's the runway that is in use. And if it's the 19 left, it goes into Bavet, comes down here, and then shoots in that way. So it will be very, very easy to switch runways if we have to. Okay, so we'll put in that we're going in on ILS runway 19 right Bavad. All I've got to do is click this. If we go into the left, I click that. So I'm just going to tap that and there it is. That fills in the route for us. Okay, I'll clean this up, bring all of these out. I think we are now ready to go. Hello, Saul Ackbury. Welcome. Come on in to Ryanair 186. Take your seat, buckle up, and let me show you where we are. We are here at Stand 6 at EGPH, which is Edinburgh. And I have a number of other aircraft all the way around me, notably Ryanair. Let me show you the detail of this. By the way, this airport is made by, this scenery is by Gary at UK 2000. Let me show you this. This is looking outside the left window. You can see the detail. And right down here is where we're going to have our self-loading cargo appear in just a moment. In fact, there's some stationary people. <laughs> I wonder if they're considering flying with us. There you can see we are at stand six, swinging around. You can see there's one aircraft departing there in the background, and the one in the foreground that's a British Air, and there's Ryanair. One in the far distant there and one almost next to us in the stands. Lovely detailed scenery, don't you think? Anyway, so that is where we're at. And I've loaded up with 7,400 and 
58 kilograms of fuel. Yes, not bad for a, a trip and the sky is looking quite clear. A few clouds here or there, but we should have a nice clear flight. Okay, let's get ourselves started. There's the battery and we have 26 volts so now I can turn on the fuel pumps and then start the APU. The APU as you know is located in the tail of the aircraft and it will generate 115 volts of electricity to allow us to do all the programming once it's up. I've got it switched to APU generator up here, so as soon as it starts up, I'll see 115 volts up there. The engine gas temperature is rising very nicely, and then it will come down in just a moment, and when it does, I'm looking for this light right here, this one here, to turn blue, and when that turns blue, then I can switch from the 26 volts coming from the batteries into the APU itself. There it is. Now I've got 115 volts and we can do all sorts of things with that. For instance, I can turn on now my IRS. I have two of those. One is on the left and the other is on the right and they will power the sat-nav, the GPS system. Turn on the galley. Turn on the emergency exit lights. No smoking. Fasten seat belts. <laughs> and over here, I'm turning on the left and the right window heat. And yes, I am turning on the probes a little early. They're stuck outside on the side here, but I like to turn them on early anyway. Now I'm turning on the hydraulic pumps. Over here you can see the light is on for the forward service hatch and equipment. That's the electric stairs which are down and which are being used right now for our self-loading cargo to board. <laughs> Now for the important bit. I turn on the APU bleed, turn on the fans and the packs, and listen. There's that sudden rush of air going through, bringing now some heat to heat up the entire cabin. It is only nine degrees outside, which is Still a little chilly, but we want a nice warm interior for our first class passengers. And then I'm going to turn on the steady light right there. And that's the first step that we have for going to start in from a cold and dark aircraft. All right. Now that we've got that, it's time to go in and program the FMC. Well, here's the first screen that comes up. We check the air rack, make sure that it is up to date and that the program is current and there are no problems with it. Push that. Our starting position is EGPH for Edinburgh. We are at gate six, so I'm going to put six in here. And that is the exact match. If I look at the coordinates, the coordinates actually match 55, 56, 9 and 3, 22, 0. So I'm going to put that into the temporary down here and push that. Now the GPS system knows where our starting point is. Go to route, we are EGPH and we're going to go to EMGM. We are flight number Ryanair RYR 186, of course. Go to next page. And our first port 
first waypoint is going to be Grice or Greece. G R I C E. And it's the first one. Then we take the Papa 600 route. So Papa 600. And that will take us to ADN. A D N N. Then we go direct to Klon. So K L O W N. Then we take the Papa 600. And that will take us to Zol. Z O L. And then we go direct to Adopi. A D O P I. And that's it. Activate and execute that. Now we'll go to descent, go to forecast, transition level. Now I'm not going to make any change to that because transition level in Norway is set by the ATC. But I will need to put in these flight levels, 150 next and then 10,000 right there. And we'll need to put in the values for that. The Q&H at our destination is 1044, so 1044. The wind speed and direction at flight level 200 is 153 at 40, so 153 at 40. And at 150, it is 153 at 37, 153 at 37. And at 10,000 feet, it is 151 at 35, 151 at 35. And then execute that. Go to departures. Now we need to listen to ATIS and see what the active runway is. We're presuming it's six, but it may not be. So ATIS at Edinburgh is 131.35. Edinburgh, airport information, Quebec 1134, Zulu, wind 112 at 1, 1, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition, few clouds at 2500, temperature, minor 2.2, altimeter 1031, landing and departing, runway 6. VFR aircraft, say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact. You have Quebec. We have Quebec. And that is our departure that we thought we were going to have, which is runway six. We'll be taking the Greece for Delta. So I'll put that in, execute. For the arrivals at EGNM, we're still looking at coming in on ILS runway. Which do you think? It'll be right or left? Probably right, I suspect. So I'm going to put 19 right. And it will be the Adopi 3 Mike. And it will be the Bravad arrival transition. Execute that. Now I'll go to the route, go to the legs. I'm going to switch this to plan. And it changes this screen. And now I'm going to go through each of these steps to see whether or not the plan is a good one. So I'm looking for any breaks, any discontinuity. So far, so good. There's ADN, and now we're getting across the water here. And there's Zoll. That's that point in Norway. There's the Adopi. And here is that interesting little route 
that brings us in all the way down to the Bravad point down here and all the way down to the active runway. The blue line is the missed approach. So hopefully we won't have to do that. But that is showing that we have a good flight plan. So I'm going to click back to map. I'm going to put the weather onto my side and put the data on. I'm going to put terrain on your side. Is that okay? And data there. So you'll be looking out for any mountains. I'll look out for the weather. I'm going to turn on the TCAS. Okay, and now I'm going to turn on the your damper and the light went out, so we're good on that. Over here, I'm going to click here and turn this up to 39,000, which is our cruising altitude. Yes, I know that ATC usually assigns our altitudes, but we are Ryanair, and ATC already know that it is futile to resist us. <laughs> Up here I'm going to put 39,000 feet as well. This is for our pressurization. Our airport elevation is 681 feet at Oslo, so that's pretty close to 700, so I'm going to put 700 feet for our landing altitude in here. As I say, that is for prep, prep, pressurization. Right, they're all on, so I'm bringing up the stairs and closing the hatch. All our passengers are being taken care of with an early little drink in their hand. I'm going to set the course to 61 which is our departure course on the runway 06. I'll set that here as well. So 61. I'll do yours as well over here. Set the course to 61. All right. Now that we've got that, we can complete the process of the program. So we'll perform now the initialization right over here. Our fuel is 7,458. We have reserves of 2,493. The trip and taxi is expected to be 4,310, making that 6,803, which is pretty close to 6.8 if we round that out. So 6.8. The nearest round out figure to the reserves would be 2.5, so 2.5 with cost index 6, then all I do is double click that and it makes the calculations for me. Up here I'm putting in our cruise altitude which is 390, the cruise wind at our altitude is 177 at 23, so 177 at 23. Transition altitude in Norway is 7,000 feet. And then I execute that. And one limit, 9 degrees. We're going to take that. We're not going to do any derates or anything like that. We don't follow noise abatement, we just make it straight out. Take off, we're going to be flaps 10. I double click this for the center of gravity and the value for the trim wheel. Then one click on each of these brings up the value for V1, rotate and lift off. So 146 I've now got to put into here. There's 146. I'm going to press the flight director on my side, then your side. 
and then I push the B nav and the L nav buttons and they both come up with a green light which says it is good. I'm arming the throttle. I'm going to turn the VOR1 on and VOR2 on both sides. Now, because we are going into an airport that we may have two runways, I now have to set up the localizer frequency for each runway in case we are moved from one to the other. The localizer on runway 19 right is 111.3 and it is 110.55 if we were redirect, uh, directed to 19 left. The VOR at Gerdemont Airport is 115.95 so 115.95 I'll put that one in and ATIS for Gerdemont is 126.12 right we're all loaded up everybody's on board now we'll do the uh, do the checklist Fuel is correct. Windows are all locked. <laughs> Seatbelt signs, they are on. Door lights are out. MCP is programmed and correct. Takeoff thrust bugs and everything done. CDU pre-flight is completed. Rudder air alarm trim is correct. Taxi briefing now. When we back out, because we need to go to... Since we need to go down to six, we need to have our tail to the left and our nose to the right. Now, anti-collision lights now go on. We're ready now to ask the nice gentleman at the bottom to give us a pushback. Now, which engine would you like to start first? Number one or number two? One or two, left or right? Start engine number right, then that's what we'll do. Okay. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready for pushback. Tail to the left. Release brake brake, please. Parking brake is released. I am going, turning the anti skid onto RTO. Brakes released. Turning off the air going into the cabin now because we need it to redirect it to the engines. And I'm switching this to number two engine for the generator. Here we go. All right. I've now switched to start. I'm looking over here. The start valve has opened. You can see the N2 is building up. When it gets to 24, then I'll introduce the fuel. It's coming up, coming up very nicely. 23 and 24. There's the fuel going in. Now I'm looking for the EGT to start. It's building up its temperature very nicely. Then I'm going to look for the low oil pressure light to go out, which it did. We should start to hear the engine on the right side. There it is, there's the engine on the right side. It's building up nicely. Looking now for 115 volts. There it is. Switching to engine number one. And starting engine number one. Star valve has opened. And here you can see the N2 is beginning to spin up. Everything is looking good. Push back complete, Park set. Parking brake is set, and brake set. there's the fuel going in. Now I'm looking for the engine gas temperature to start building up, getting a good flame there. Steering pin is pulled, watch for the slip release vents on your right, have a good flight. Thank you gentlemen, the low oil pressure light has come out, 
the engine is building up very nicely. I'm now looking for 115 volts up here from engine number one. And there it is, that's engine number one, 115 volts. Just wait for this tick mark to go up to show that the engine generators are stable. Now I'm going to switch this to the main engines for our generator. Turn on the heat blasters again, turn off the APU and turn off the APU here. Turn on the three runway lights and now go to flaps 10 and we'll be ready in a moment to got to make one slight adjustment there okay our flaps are going up right let's do the after start checklist generators are on check probe heat is on anti-ice not required Isolation valves are correct. Engine start levers idle, detent. Flight deck door closed and locked. Recall is checked. Flight controls checked. Flaps. We have green lights. Stabilizer trim is set. Auto brake is RTO check. Speed brake lever is down and detent. Ground equipment is clear. So. Right, I've just started the Navigraph charts and here it is on my right so you can follow where we are. We're the red triangle and we are going to go in a moment out here and then go straight down the taxiway. So, break off, look left, look right, make sure everything is clear. Give a little boost to get ourselves moving here. And then we'll move over here to the taxi line. This is Edinburgh. Lovely scenery here. Absolutely delightful. And of course it's made by Gary at UK2000. That's the scenery designer. So nothing's coming from the right here, and we'll turn left. Looking good so far. a little bit of cloud out there but it shouldn't spoil our flight today according to the weather forecast I looked at earlier it's fairly clear over the North Sea and certainly over uh, the Norwegian area
out there somewhere. I hope it's not going to interfere. Ah, I see him now. I don't know if we're going to be able to take off before he comes in, but we'll see. And we make our turn here and then we'll get our clearance from the tower.
to the runway, it comes up on the screen that you can contact the tower to get your departure clearance. But it didn't come up. I couldn't even see it. So we took off anyway. Pity about that orbit flight that was coming in on the final. He had to go around. But then again, we are Ryanair. We have priority. <laughs> oh, well. A little bit of excitement and it started us off to a good start. Now we're on our way, we'll be making our turn in just a moment to the right and we'll start then to head, head east. So, if you want to go into the back and have some of that champagne and have some caviar, and we have the best toast biscuits as well. And as soon as we're on our descent and approaching to Gardamon Airport, I'll give you a shout and have you come back up, okay? I'll see you in a bit. to land on runway one left, flying a left base, 
which is exactly what we're on right now. We are descending and we are pretty much on left base. We'll be turning at Valpo to intercept the final at that point. So, I'm turning the lights on. I Attendance, uh, seatbelt signs are on. Attendance should start picking up all the glasses from the champagne. What do you think? <laughs> all right. Oh. So we're 22 miles away. That's not bad. I've changed the chart so that you can see where we are. And there's the there's the route. Our next point will be Valpu and then Ogras. Valpu is the initial approach fix. At that point we need to be 220 knots or less and 5,000 feet. So we're going through 7,500 at the moment. The barometer is 1042. So everything is looking good so far. All right, good. Now I'm going to go to Flaps one. And I'm now going to go to Flaps two. And it does look beautiful down there. This is really, you are correct. This is a lovely entrance into the beauty of Norway. Look at all of that. I've got to take some tourist pictures of this. Just look at all the detail. Isn't that magnificent? Making in G 
just a moment. But we're holding at 5,000 feet as we come up to Valpo, our initial approach base. It was a little bit of a rush to get everything changed around, but it worked out.
taking this. Line air one eight six clear to land one way one left. Clear to land one way one left. Line air one eight six. We are clear to land. Everything is set up. Engine start switches are on. All lights are on. Attendance secure for landing. All the nav aids are correct. We have two white and two red. Well, what do you think? Should I do it? Are you game? All right. I have control. <laughs> One thousand. One thousand check and coming down the glide slope. And gear is down. Four miles. Until we 
get to the Gulf. And then we'll turn in on the Gulf. Gonna have to watch out for these other aircraft. There's the kamikazes are everywhere again. quite a bit of snow around here well, I don't know which one he's going into oh he's turning up okay to be taking not this one but we're going to be taking the Gulf which is this next one here he's over there to the left so we're clear of him stick my hand out so we're turning Pacific left here there's the Pacific A yeah And we're looking for a parking spot just here at the end of the terminal. So let's see what we've got. I'm going to bring up the parking again. And we're on the golf. Oh, that's what I need to do is I need to stay on this and then make the turn okay this is number 10 we'll take this one would you stick your hand out please okay all right this one this of course is aerosoft that made this scenery and we're coming up to our stop point and apply the brakes a little bit here and whoa there all right and all right Lights off, engines off. TCAS is off. Okay, start to shut everything down. That's the stairs going down and the door is opening. Window heat's off, probes are off. All right, everything is looking good. And all right, they're going off. All of our passengers are leaving. <laughs> all of the empty champagne glasses are left behind. All right, and battery off. Everything is shut down is complete oh i should take some take a video of this this is the airport scenery for gardamon airport look at the detail incredible detail
There's some other parked aircraft over there. And it is a lovely day here. An absolutely lovely day. And we have a few kamikaze vehicles floating around, but none of them are making a beeline for us. Right, Sol. We made the flight, and you were quite correct. It is a beautiful entrance into Norway. The scenery is magnificent. All the trees and the mountains and the fjords, everything is, it really is nice. This is a really good choice that you made. And I'm glad that we got to do it for you. So, I wish you a very good week. And everyone else, I will see you next week on Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.